Hey guys, this is David from Omega Engineering. Today we're going to be scaling a DP25B-S20 meter to read microswing. Super nerdy stuff and a lot of calculations coming up, but don't worry, I'll make it as simple as possible. If you want to download the calculations and all the other formulas, please see the links below. If you want to figure out how to connect the strain gauge to the BCM and the BCM to the DP25B-S, please see our previous video titled, How to Connect a Strain Gauge to the DP25B-S Meter. If you look at this configuration, there's just one active strain gauge. So this constitutes a quarter bridge in the Wheatstone network. So if you look at the quarter bridge configurations, RG is the strain gauge that we have bonded onto the stainless steel flat. And VN is the excitation voltage going into the Wheatstone network. And V out is the millivolt signal that we get from the BCM that goes back to the DP25B-S unit. Now let's look at the formula we'll use to calculate microstrain. Epsilon equals negative 4 VR over GF times 1 plus 2 VR multiplied by 1 plus RL over RG. If you look at the parentheses where you have 1 plus RL over RG, RL indicates lead by resistance and RG indicates the resistance of the strain gauge. In our case, the lead by resistance is really negligible. So 1 plus RL over RG can be considered as 1. So we just omit that. So now we are left with epsilon equals negative 4 VR over GF times 1 plus 2 VR. Epsilon equals strain and VR equals the millivolt or the voltage change when the strain gauge is strained minus the voltage change when it's unstrained. And GF stands for gauge factor. It should be listed on your packaging slip. Usually it's close to 2.00. We are calculating for epsilon, which is strain. Now pull any number from the air. For this case, let's say epsilon equals 1000 microstrain. So 1000 equals negative four times VR over GF, which is gauge factor. In this case, it's two times 1 plus 2 VR. So we can form our equation based on that. So which becomes 2000 times 1 plus 2 VR equals negative 4 VR. So you get 2000 plus 4000 VR equals negative 4 VR. Now VR equals 2000 over 4004. Now if you did the math, VR equals 0 0.4995 millivolts per volt. So that's your change in resistance between strained and an unstrained state. Now that we've calculated the sensitivity, it's time to push some buttons and get this meter programmed. So once you're done with the wiring and once you've turned on the DP25B-S unit, press the menu button once, you'll see INPT, which stands for input. Now press the tear button once, you'll see a bunch of different ranges. Hit the NTGRS button to scroll through and we want to set it to read plus minus 50 millivolts. Press menu button to save it, you'll see DEC.P. For this example, because we want it to read 1000 microstrain, I'm going to be using FFFF. So hit the tear button once. You see the number of digits there. Now, I'm not having any decimal place. If you have any decimal place, hit the NTGRS button once. You can scroll through. I'm not having any decimal place right now. Press menu button once to save it, and you'll see RDSO. RDSO stands for reading scale and offset. So now press the tear button once. You'll see IN1, which is input 1. Press tear button once, you should see all zeros. Now IN1 corresponds to the input from the BCM or the Wheatstone network when there's no strain being applied. So obviously we want to be reading 0 millivolts. Press menu button to save it. RD1 corresponds to the amount of microstrain we want to read when there's no strain being applied. So RD1 corresponds to 0 as well. Press menu button to save it. So here's where we'll be using the 0.4995 sensitivity value that we calculated in the previous calculations. So now we have IN2, which is basically the input coming from the Wheatstone network. We have a microstrain of 1000. So at 1000 microstrain, we compute the IN2 value. We take the VR, which is 0.4995, multiply that with the excitation voltage that we give to the Wheatstone network. In this case, that is 5 volts. Multiply that with the number of counts per millivolt. So if you want to know the number of counts per millivolt corresponding to the input range, see page 26 of the DP25B-S manual. Look under natural gain. So for plus or minus 50 millivolts, natural gain is 40 counts per millivolt. So here we go. 0 0.4995 millivolts per volt multiplied by 5 volts multiplied by 40 counts per millivolt, which gives you 99.99. So that's exactly what we're going to put in IM2. Hit the tear button once, 99.99, close to 100. So I have 100 listed here. If you don't have 100 and if you want to change it, hit the NTGRS button to change the value of the digits. 
hit the tear button to scroll through the digits. Press menu button to save it, you'll see RD2. So now IN2 corresponds to 100, and RD2 corresponds to the strain you want to read on the DP25B-S meter. Press tear, RD2 has to be 1000, corresponding to 1000 micro strain. So I have 1000 listed here. If you don't have 1000 listed there, go ahead and change it. The way you change it is by hitting the NT0s button to change the value of digits. Hit the tear button to scroll through the digits. Press the menu button once to save it. Then you see the RDCF menu. You can leave that as it is by default. Press the reset button twice. And if you don't see a value equal to zero, hit the tear button once and you should see a value equal to zero. Now, when you apply any strain on your beam, you'll either see a positive micro strain corresponding to tension, and then you'll see a negative micro strain reading corresponding to compression. So there you have it, folks. We have successfully scaled the DP25B-S meter to read in terms of micro strain. If you have any other questions, don't stress yourself out. No strain whatsoever. Feel free to give us a call. We'll be more than happy to help you out.